Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and this video here is going to go over the scale and Karka farming location that I discovered in Lost Shores. So to get started, this location can be found by the Camp Karka Waypoint, which is in Lost Shores. I'm pretty sure in the southeastern or southern central area. Uh, somewhere just in there. I show where it is pretty much um, at the beginning of the video on the map. You'll be able to find it from there. So the main thing that we're going to be doing with this farming location is circling this uh, island which Camp Karka Waypoint is on. We're not going to be circling it up above but instead down by where the water is where I am throughout the course of the video. Now there's two types of mobs that we're going to be killing on this island. On the western end of the island there's scale which the scale are the easier mobs that we're going to be killing here and mainly in my opinion at least I'm using the scale to build up my um, sigil of luck number which will give me 15% magic fine when it's at full and until then it'll give me 0.6 for every single time that I do kill something and start to stack it and the scale are still good to kill even after you've stacked it because they're a nice breather in between killing the karka which we'll get to in a little bit and just because they're easy they drop pretty much the same stuff um, excluding the carcass shells so <clears throat> the scale are on the western end of this little island down by the water and are extremely easy to kill the only special ability that they do is cast regen on themselves which you can take it off with enough attacks regardless anyway and uh, pretty much after you I run up and down the scale once or twice to kill them all, build up my sigil, and then I start heading over to the eastern portion of the island. I usually cut over to the eastern portion of the island by going south around the little loop, and this is going to take you to the Karka, which are going to give you better loot, which will get you, you know, more money, and uh, they're going to be significantly harder to kill than the scale. So that's definitely, you want to take these one-on-one, -on -one, make sure you, your character is ready for them, make sure you're ready for them, and uh, you know learn if you can actually handle them first and learn if you can actually kill them and once you can then you can start you know getting more risky and you know going more offensive than defensive and stuff like that like for my thief I throw down an AOE blind and I pretty much leave it down for the entire fight with these Karka that way I can make sure 100% sure that they do not hit me and uh, I pretty much kill them with auto attack and throw in a few different abilities here and there as you can see throughout the video and um from hunting in this entire area all together you're going to be getting pretty much like the following items vial of potent blood which is going to be the common item you're going to be getting f for fine crafting materials of course vial of powerful blood which is like the level 400 version of uh, the vial of potent blood it's very valuable and quite rare you'll probably get maybe two three if you're lucky four of them per hour of farming here which uh, in that item alone will be one gold pretty much now the vial of potent blood, you probably get 15 to 20 of them farming here every hour, which is maybe 35 to 45 silver depending on the market at the current point in time. You will also get carcass shells which sell for about 7 to I think uh, 11 silver a piece. And you'll be getting about maybe 4 or 5 of them an hour. I got a lot during the course of this video, which um, I just got extremely lucky. So you really can't take what I find throughout this video and uh, think you're going to get the same thing for farming here for 10 minutes. In this video I got extremely lucky and um, I made probably getting close to a gold in just the 10 minutes that I made this video. Also you're going to be getting salvageable items here, um, you know white items, but you only want to salvage the, uh, the metal-esque white items, like something that when you salvage it you'll get mithril. And even then, what I do recommend you do instead is list the items like the Acolyte Shoulders, Acolyte Cow, Chainmail Hallberk, and all of those. List them on the auction house for 99 copper. They'll always sell, and you'll pretty much always make more money selling them on the auction house versus salvaging them yourself. The only bonus to salvaging them yourself is you're going to get a uh, Ancient of Entropy achievement from salvaging like 200 items a month or something, or uh, every single time you salvage 200 items. Aside from that, really, you'll make more money actually selling these on the auction house slash trading post, whichever you want to call it, and uh, not salvaging it, pretty much. So, there's a few more things that you're going to be getting in from farming here, such as eggs, which are used in uh, the chef profession, and they sell for a halfway decent amount on the trading post as well. Um, not nearly as much as, you know, the other items that we're going to be farming here, but 
eggs are quite common and they'll really like give you a little boost to your income at the end of the hour what I'd recommend you use here is Omnom Berry Bars as far as Magic Fine food goes. That combined with your Sigil of Luck, you'll have quite a bit of Magic Fine without even trying. Um, you'll have actually 45% Magic Fine on you at all times, not including any that you might have from your gear or anything like that. So um, that's what I recommend Magic Fine wise as far as food goes. Or you can use Cup of Lotus Fries if you... Uh, you know, specialize in like condition damage and you want the extra magic fine or you just want to save a little bit of money, that's fine too. You can use Cup of Lotus Fries. As far as uh, potions go, I recommend uh, Sharpening Stones if you just want to deal, deal more damage and you focus a lot into Vitality and Toughness and or Tuning Crystals. Um, you can use a few different potions here anyway. I'm pretty sure they have a uh, like a scale or at least like reptilian one or maybe just something else that you found along the ways but at least that's what I use and um, as far as how much money you'll be making per hour farming here I found you make about one to two gold per hour depending on how lucky you get of course and of course you can always bring a friend here to farm with you which will uh, increase your overall you know money earned per hour and aside from that that's really all I can think about saying for this uh video. Now everything is in this video is sped up a little bit since I didn't talk for the entire 10 minutes that I was farming here. Um, I don't know how long the video will be right now but just in case I just wanted to let you know that it was sped up a little bit blah 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 blah. It didn't look like I was speed hacking or something like that. And aside from that I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you decide to give this farming location a try feel free to post a comment, like, subscribe to me for future uh, Guild Wars 2 videos and aside from that Good luck, and as always, happy hunting.